Hello folks, it's Chris Yost at Wesley United Methodist Church. Today we are reading from the New Revised Standard Version in John's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. And this is where Jesus' public ministry starts kicking off. Um, anyway, let's get started. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born having, uh, having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astounded that I say to you, quote, You must be born from above, end quote. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify of what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If, you, if I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. This passage... Um, in the teaching of the nature of the kingdom of God is, is, uh, um, oh, it's so many levels to it, friends. I, I, let me just jump straight in to say that the notion of being born from above, um, it kicks off this whole section that talks about the very nature of what it is to, um, you know, we, we use the words being saved. Uh, what does it mean being saved? It means being born again, being born from above. Um, all of these things are not with their sole focus about what happens when your mortal flesh dies. Okay, This is about here and now and in the hereafter. It's about the renewed existence, making right our fellowship with God. Again, uh, this harkens back to the Garden of Eden, the notion that in um, the choosing of selfishness, self-will, of, of choosing to uh, eat what was not ours, we died that day. Our, our, it's like the, the part of us that was intimately connected with God died. What Jesus is talking about is that we, through him, in him, are reborn unto God. Our, our, our souls are reignited. The fire within us is reignited with God. Um, this section in, in verse, uh, what is it here? Verse 5 and 6, being born of water and the Spirit. Verse 6, born of flesh is flesh, born of spirit is spirit. Never forget, we are incarnate beings. This isn't saying, well, the Spirit is good and the flesh is bad. Never, never, never. The flesh was designed to be an incarnate expression of the breath of God. Okay? But what he's talking about is, is like being born of water. It's, it's, I know we use this when we refer to baptism, but it is a reminder that is the birth waters. It is literally the pouring forth of water when a person is born. Okay? That's the next line's match. Flesh is flesh. When it says being born of the Spirit... It's spirit is spirit. It, it, it's um, you can't disconnect those. Okay, it, it's a very real worldly 
birth connected with a spiritual birth. Uh, it sounds a little cryptic in this next section. Um, when he's talking about, hey, if you can't understand worldly things, how can it tell you about spiritual things or, 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 or heavenly things, rather? That's the continuation of this water, spirit, born of the flesh, born of the spirit. How can I tell you about earthly or heavenly things if you don't understand earthly things? It's all connected, friends. Um, we get to, in verse 14 and 15, this is one of the benefits that John's gospel has. John is able to reflect on the totality of Jesus's life, death, and resurrection and lifts up different speeches or manners of speech. Um, and, and here he has the benefit of the resurrection, right? He knows that the Son of Man is going to be lifted up and brings that up. But then this last line in verse 15, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Friends, that means that you may have the life of God. It is not isolated to you never die. I know that's a little hard to wrap our minds around in our eight-minute devotional here. <laughs> when, it, when, when the eternal is referred to, you and I think about outside of time. It is another way to refer to the abode of God the presence of God. When we talk about have eternal life, that is that breath of God that uh, we, we think about with the Garden of Eden, that, that essence of God with us. If By believing in the Son of God, we have that returned presence of God, that breath of God in us. That breath transcends earthly life, earthly death. It transcends everything. It is not just about when you're dead, finally you'll know God. Okay? God is here. God wants to love you now. Eternal life is yes today and wherever we go from here. There's a lot in there, friends. And if you ever have questions, feel free to shoot me an email, pastor at wesleyumcgreenville.org, and I'll do my best to help out in any way we can. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to pick up on one of the most famous lines um, in Scripture. I used to call it the um, field goal and the extra point uh, Bible verse for the NFL, John 316, teen, teen. For today, let's pray. God, we thank you for this new life. We thank you for the birth that has come from above. We thank you, God, for the transforming presence of your spirit, how it uh, um, isn't just simply a warm fuzzy. It's not just something kind to remember, but rather in a very three-dimensional, life-giving, incarnate way, God, your saving presence is known. Bless the listeners today, God, that they would know that mercy, know that grace. In Jesus' name, amen.